Did you know that after reading English translations of books like the Bhagavad Gita, J. Robert Oppenheimer was so moved that he learned Sanskrit to read the original text of these ancient Hindu scriptures? In this video, I wanted to share the impact the Bhagavad Gita had on J. Robert Oppenheimer's life and explain why it is important to understand before or after watching Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer which is releasing worldwide this Friday. The story of Oppenheimer is one of the moral dilemmas and with the release of this biopic, it's important to know how Oppenheimer came to quote the Bhagavad Gita where he says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. To prepare for the role, even lead actor Killian Murphy read the Bhagavad Gita and he felt the ancient Hindu text was a consolation for J. Robert Oppenheimer. I did read the Bhagavad Gita in, in preparation and, it, and I, thought it, I thought it was absolutely beautiful text. It was a consolation to him, I think he, he kind of needed it. Christopher Nolan mentioned one of the biggest reasons he made this movie is because at some point he came across a crucial piece of information that intrigued him deeply. He realized that Oppenheimer and his team were dealing with a small possibility that pushing a button would set fire into Earth's atmosphere and destroy the entire planet. And yet, they did push that button. Talking about Christopher Nolan's movies, one of my favorite films from him is Inception. It's what actually inspired me to learn about hypnosis in the first place. Because at a closer look, you may come to realize too that the film is all about reprogramming the subconscious mind by tapping into the deep layers of their subconscious dreams. And similar to it, I think Oppenheimer is going to be another great film that will make us question about our own human nature and the choices that we make. If you were in a situation where you were given a choice to create a weapon that could eradicate hundreds of thousands of people or even the entire planet, would you actually do it? See, the choice isn't that simple here. Let's look at the background of J. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb to understand this. Oppenheimer started working under the wings of J.J. Thompson, who discovered the electron. But due to the pressures of work stress, Oppenheimer started to lose weight as he lost appetite for food. And that's when he also developed a habit of chain smoking, which ultimately led to his death. Around the 1930s, his mental condition had started to deteriorate. One time, he almost strangled a friend to death who had cheerfully come to deliver the news of his wedding. But despite all his mental problems, Oppenheimer was able to carry himself as he had bigger ambitions and duties to fulfill in his life. But inside himself, he was starting to feel stagnant mentally. And that's when he entered into the world of mysticism and became attracted to the Hindu mythology. He learned Sanskrit from Berkeley professor Arthur W. Ryder to deepen his knowledge on this. And it was around this time when the Bhagavad Gita started having a profound effect on his life. On August 13, 1942, the Manhattan Project began where they would work to develop the atomic bomb. Oppenheimer was appointed as the head of this project. The main motive to create this bomb quickly was to beat the possibilities of Nazis getting their hand on such a terrifying weapon who could use it to destroy countless innocent lives. And in this team, there were other brilliant scientists such as Albert Einstein, Richard Feynman, and Edward Teller. To test the bomb, they had to select a location where there wouldn't be any casualties. That's when Oppenheimer selected New Mexico where he used to go on trips with his family as a child. He named the test Trinity that comes from the Bible, which means God, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. The detonation test was done on 12th July 1945. After the detonation, there was a big fire shaped as a mushroom, bright as the light of a thousand suns. Looking back to which Oppenheimer quoted the Bhagavad Gita verses, including verse 32 from 11th chapter, where he says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of the worlds. And the famous black and white footage that we saw in the beginning comes from the documentary The Decision to Drop the Bomb, where Oppenheimer expressed his thoughts and emotions following the test. Before the testing, he thought he knew the consequences and was totally involved in making of the atom bomb. After he saw the actual weapon of mass destruction that was about to take thousands of lives, he even became regretful. But there was also this dilemma of what would happen if Hitler created the bomb first. But later, when the bomb was dropped in Japan, Oppenheimer was distraught because he didn't think it was necessary at all. The Bhagavad Gita is a really important Hindu scripture. It's based on the conversation between Prince Arjuna and Lord Krishna in the beginning of an epic battle called the Mahabharata. The thing about this battle was, it was taking place between two factions of a royal family, the Pandavas and Kauravas, who were direct blood relatives. 
while the Pandava prince Arjuna is on the battlefield, he is feeling all torn up inside about whether he should fight this war or not. On the other side of this battlefield, he sees his opponent who are people he deeply cares about and he feels like surrendering before even the war starts. The wise Lord Krishna who is driving his chariot acts as a personal advisor and mentor to help Arjuna get through the war. To guide Arjuna to do the right thing, Lord Krishna shares wisdom focusing on the idea of dharma, which is all about following the right path and fulfilling our duties even when things get complicated. In his book, The Gita of Robert J. Oppenheimer, James A. Hegia compares Oppenheimer to Arjuna from Mahabharata, and this is what he wrote in the book. Krishna's message to Arjuna is clear, you must fight. To Oppenheimer, the message would have seemed equally clear. If it was proper for Arjuna to kill his friends and relatives in a squabble over the inheritance of a kingdom, then how could it be wrong for Oppenheimer to build a weapon to kill Germans and Japanese whose governments were trying to conquer the world? Oppenheimer's choice to quote the Bhagavad Gita reveals his deep introspection and inner struggle. During the battle of Mahabharata, Lord Krishna is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him he takes on the multi-armed form and says, now I am become the death, the destroyers of the world. Some people may think that Oppenheimer is comparing himself to Lord Krishna, but it was quite the contrary. Oppenheimer often felt like he was the Prince Arjuna who was actually in the battle trying to do the right thing. But when he saw the devastating potential of his own creation, he was reminded by this verse simply because it reminded him of what he had read in the text. Oppenheimer understood the necessity of the atomic bomb to defeat the Nazis but also recognized its destructive power. By referencing the ancient scripture, he sought out to underscore the complexity of human existence and weight of his decision. And just as Arjuna faced the consequence of the war, Oppenheimer confronted the devastating aftermath of the atomic bomb. And it was Bhagavad Gita that provided him with a framework to navigate the moral dilemma and accept the responsibilities imposed upon him. Oppenheimer always kept a worn-out copy of the Bhagavad Gita near his desk. He would share the book with his friends and often quote passages from it, even speaking from it at a memorial service for President Franklin D. Roosevelt. In 1963, when asked by Christian Century magazine about top 10 books that influenced his vocational attitude and philosophy of life, Oppenheimer included the Bhagavad Gita along with T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. Coming back to the movie, Christopher Nolan's cinematic interpretation of Oppenheimer's story holds great promise in exploring the significance and premise of the Bhagavad Gita, and it will provide audiences with an opportunity to reflect on the complexities of human nature and the immense responsibility that comes with wielding great power. Unlike some of the other Christopher Nolan movies like The Tenet or The Batman Trilogy, this movie is supposed to lack action scenes, but it's important to understand that this movie is based more on psychological warfare. For centuries, the Bhagavad Gita has served as a manual to live a more fulfilled life, and if you want to understand how to apply the teachings of Bhagavad Gita to design a better reality and manifest your dream life, don't forget to watch this video next.